Um, for for practice this week in my short little week before I headed out of town, um, I decided to move in the direction of compass pose, which is a shape that I like never really teach. Um, but I was sitting in my car yesterday, and it was a day where like. <laughs> It, things are just constantly on fire <laughs> like around me <laughs> um and managing all the things that needed to be done um to put out those fires like in the midst of that I was still in this like really beautiful perspective of like like I can do my best and see what I can do and just like work step by step by through what's um being put into my path but when I was sitting in my car and I was like what is the sensation that I'm craving to experience right now uh, and what would be the most like loving practice I could offer myself and this is before I was going in to teach a class and the answer was grounding um, and when I was thinking about what compass pose requires, it requires um, both space in the body and this like rootedness because it's from this like solid steady foundation when we're in a seat that we can then expand and open up into our compass pose. And when I was thinking about like what a compass offers us, it offers us direction, right? And in order to have a clear sense of the direction that we want to go, the, the direction we want to put our energy and focus our energy in order to know that and move with clarity and purposeful action. We have to make space, right? We have to slow down and make space and get grounded and get still and quiet in order to know what the heart is asking for. So both these sensations of groundedness and, um, that sensation of wanting to find clear direction in compass pose and when things are kind of turbulent around me um, is what culminated <laughs> into this practice. And so as we move through the flow, it's gonna be like close to the earth for the most part. Um, and it's about those sensations of finding groundedness in order to create space of slowing down, making room so that we can more clearly understand how we want to direct our energy and using that compass, that inner compass of the heart to help us navigate it all so that as the turbulence around us ensues, we can still move clearly through it. Um, we're going to start in a seated meditation today just so we can ground and breathe here. Um, before we begin to move our bodies. So go ahead and find just a comfortable seat, um, whether that's cross-legged or maybe on a block if you have one. You could also choose to sit on your shins. Of course, if you prefer to lay down for a couple moments as we arrive, feel free to settle into the support of the earth. And once you adjust into your seat, Allow your eyes to close. As you shut down your eyes, that helps the process of turning inward. And we take out the distraction of sight and we start to turn inward with our inner gaze. To notice what's happening at the levels of body, breath, heart, and mind. So as you direct your attention inward, and as you start to deepen your breath, again, just noticing the more subtle sensations, noticing the energy of your heart, starting to become aware of the thoughts that are moving through your mind. As you continue to deepen your breath and observe in this place of mindful awareness, 
Maybe asking yourself that same question of how do you want to feel? What is the practice that you need today? And just leaving space for your heart and your body to step forward. Encouraging the mind to take more of a back seat in that decision of what you need today in this 60 minute practice. What you wanna feel from these 60 minutes. Just seeing what body and heart have to say, letting the ego mind be not part of the decision to the best of our ability. I'm just letting that information help guide you through your shapes and through your movements, helping to guide you in terms of the intensity with what you move, the pace at what you move, the intentional thoughts that you infuse into your practice. And when you're ready, go ahead and bring maybe one or both hands to your heart space. Just holding that energy that you're wanting to cultivate today on your yoga mat, at your heart. Take a deep breath in through your nose. And then open mouth, exhale, let it go. A deep breath in, breathing in your intention in the direction that you want to move. The cleansing exhale, releasing anything that stands in the way. One more time when you're ready, deep breath in. And open mouth, exhale, release. So I'm going to go ahead and seal your lips. Breathe in and out of your nose. As you start to release your hands and open your eyes, we're going to move from the seat. So let's start by drawing our right foot in and our left leg long. Um, and the angle of your legs, this can be like, customized to your body. Right? We're going for an inner leg stretch here for, through the left leg. So flexing through your left toes, tilt your pelvis forward, yeah. And then think about inhaling to sit up really tall. And on your exhale, keep your left toes flexed to the sky to start to walk forward any amount. So this could be like two inches. You could come down to your forearms, depending on the space in your body. You could rest your forehead to the backs of your hands. And whatever variation you're in, continue to tilt your pubic bone forward, tailbone to the sky. But think about continuing to externally rotate your left toes to the ceiling. So instead of letting the foot collapse in, think about using your outer thigh and glute strength to keep that rotation of your left toes to the sky. And then from here, we're going to bring our left hand to the inside of our left leg. And a gentle side bend. So don't think about going into your deepest depth right away. We're just starting to warm up the body. Right hip stays rooted. Reach your right hand up and overhead. Then depending on your space that you initially have in your body, you can adjust how your left arm is. Maybe forearm to the earth. With which will rotate your heart to the ceiling. Take a nice big breath in. And out. And then slowly start to rise up. And we'll just switch outside. So left foot comes in, reach your right leg long. Again, actively flex your right toes to the sky. Rotate the bowl of your pelvis forward. Take a big breath in as you lengthen. And then on your exhale, start to bring it forward any amount. Then keep energizing through your right quad. And think as you tip your pelvis forward, you imagine a string from your sternum reaching 
out from your chest. So there's this lengthening forward and then down energy. Just give yourself a couple more cycles of breath here. And as you start to feel ready for your side body stretch, again, right hand's gonna come on the inside of your right leg, starting super gentle. Just reach your left hand up and over at me. You think about every inhale as the invitation for extension. And every exhale, feel free to explore a little bit more depth, but make sure you're listening to your body and allowing ego to be set aside. And just responding to the subtle voice of sensation. And take one more cycle of breath. And as you rise up from here, we're going to do one more seated shape before we shift into tabletop. So we'll take a butterfly pose, a seated butterfly. So as the feet come towards each other, hands to the fronts of your shin bones. Inhale, think calf spine, pull your chest forward and through. And your exhale, start to dive forward any amount. So again, it doesn't matter how far you go. So any initial openness to your hips here, maybe walk your hands forward. Take two cycles of breath. Your third breath in, start to press the earth the weight, rise up. And as you exhale, drawing your knees in, maybe curl into a seated cannonball, tucking through your chin, take a deep breath to the back of your heart space. And then let that breath go. A tabletop pose, go ahead and shift onto all fours. As you bring your shoulders over your wrists, and stack your hips above your knees while you have to our cow pose, start to lift up through your heart and tailbone. And on your exhalation, slowly make your way into your cat pose, tuck through your tail round the back of your heart up to the sky, let your head hang heavy. And twice more like that, we'll inhale to cow, tailbone to the ceiling. Drop your belly, actively pull your navel to your spine as you lift your chest and gaze. And exhale, leading with the tailbone, slowly start to tuck and round, push the earth away. Head heavy, shoulders out of ears. Last one, inhale to our cow pose. Scoop up through your heart and tailbone. Lengthen your front body as much as possible. And then exhale to your cat pose, creating as much space to the back of your body as you can. Now then start to come to your neutral spine. So we're gonna tuck through our toes. We're gonna slowly press up and back to your first downward facing dog. And giving yourself some time here, extend your right heel to the earth and give that a whole cycle of breath. Then switch, reach your left heel to the earth and pause for a full cycle of breath. Then feel free to find a little bit of a quicker paddle, one heel and the other reaching to the earth. And then start to take that paddle into a walk to the top of your yoga mat. Be reaching each heel towards the earth as you bring it forward until you arrive in your forward fold. And add a little softness into your knees, let your belly rest to your thighs and completely relax the weight of your skull. Just melting across your thighs, take a slow breath in and a slow breath out. 
On your inhale, start to lift up halfway, recruiting your belly strength, lengthen your spine. And as you exhale, step your left foot to the back of your yoga mat. We're going to lower our left knee all the way down to the earth. First, just pull your chest forward. Take a nice big breath in. As you exhale, begin to get strong through your right foot. Breathe into your Anjani Asana, low crescent lunge to lift your heart and hands. And then adding in a side body stretch, we're going to let the right hand fall towards the earth beside us. Reach your left hand up and overhead. Actively stretch your tailbone towards the ground. Relax your left shoulder out of your ear, but think about lifting your entire left ribs off of your pelvis. So the entire left side of your rib cage has this upward energy creating space through your side body. And from here, we'll take an inhale. Both hands are going to go high to the sky. On your exhale, hands to the earth. Lengthen your right leg coming into your half split, Ardha Hanmanasana. If you need to slide your right foot forward or adjust where your right foot is in space, just take a moment here. And then flex your right toes towards your face. Extend your sternum to the front of the room and untuck your tailbone towards the sky. Think about lifting your right booty cheek slightly up so we're not dumping through the right hip. And as you lean into the energy of your right leg, think about dragging your right heel towards the back of your yoga mat as you drag your left knee energetically forward. And from here, we're going to walk our hands on the inside of our right leg. And we're going to turn all of our body to the left. So we're in this like extended leg tabletop. You might need to adjust your right foot a little bit. Get strong through your right leg. Press down to the four corners of your right foot. And reach your hips back in space. And just take one inhale in. And one exhale out. And as you shift forward, you're going to crawl back to where we just were. So rotating into our half split. So bend into your right knee. And then go ahead and bring your right hand on the inside of your right foot. Modified side angle, left hand reaches to the sky. For me, I like to have my left leg in this moment long, right behind me. For stability, if it feels better to kickstand, you can. But this long left toes towards the back of my yoga mat gives me personally a deeper stretch. So you can see what feels good for you. Take a big breath in. And then go ahead and exhale, release your left hand down. We're going to start to scoop back into a tabletop pose. So nothing fancy there. We'll inhale to our cow shape. Lift your heart, lift your tailbone. And exhale around the your spine. As you come to neutral, tuck your toes, downward facing dog, send your pelvis up and back. Just take a deep breath through your nose. Then open up, exhale, let it go. And walking forward to the top of your yoga mat, find your forward fold. Getting space for your, your hamstrings, which is really helpful from your compass pose. Inhale to lift up halfway. Continue to untuck your tailbone to the sky as you lengthen your spine. And exhale, forward fold. You're going to step your right foot to the back of your yoga mat. And release your right knee to the earth. First, just pause here. Pull your chest forward, starting that openness through your right hip. Big breath in. With exhale, just begin to get really strong through your left foot. And then inhale to your Anjaneyasana, your low crescent lunge lifting up. As you empty your breath, let your left hand fall towards the earth beside you. And then start to reach your right hand up and over, side bending to the left side of the room. Think about your core strength lifting the front of your pelvis, which allows length to your low back. And one more cycle of breath here. Then that spaciousness between your right ribs and your right hip. 
and inhale, lengthen through your center line. Okay, the entire pitch floats away from the pelvis, keeping that length through your spine, half splits, hands to the earth, lengthen through your left leg. So again, you might need to adjust where your left heel is. Notice what's happening through your left hip. Notice where it is in space. If it's kind of collapsing down and in, think about that slight lift up through your left sitting bone. Find extension through your spine. So trying to create almost like a cow spine through your heart and tailbone. As you flex your left toes to your face, energetically root your left heel down into the earth. Strong through your left quad, drag your left heel back and hug your right knee forward. And take two more cycles of breath. And then as you start to rotate from here, you might find like a little softness to the left knee, depends. You know, walk your hands on the inside of your left leg and keep walking until you rotate into your extended leg tabletop. You can try to get all four corners of your left foot to the earth and then reach your hips back in space. So it's an extended leg child's pose just for one cycle of breath. And as you rise and start to unwind to face the top of your yoga mat, you'll bend into your left knee. And bring your left hand on the inside of your left foot. Again, right leg can be long behind you, or you can kickstand it towards the left side of your yoga mat. We're going to find this modified side angle. So right hand's going to reach up to the sky. Take a nice big breath in and slow breath out. You can kind of explore the different angles to the right leg here. So one hip might feel really different than the other. I have a little bit of a situation through my right hip. So this side needs my back toes to be tucked. So that's an option too. And then when you start to feel ready to release, you're going to bring your right hand down to the earth. Again, nothing fancy, just start to shift back into your tabletop pose, all fours. We'll inhale to our cow pose to reset our spine. We're pulling your pelvis back as you pull the heels of your hands towards your knees. Then exhale to your cat spine, push the earth away. Think about pressing down and forward through your hands. So you come back to neutral eventually, start to tuck your toes and find your downward facing dog again. Your down dog, take a deep inhale. And then open mouth, exhale. We'll breathe our right leg up to the sky now, three-legged dog. And as you breathe out, bend your knee and open your head. And inhale to re-extend three-legged dog. And as you exhale, step your right foot forward to the top of your yoga mat. Coming up to your fingertips, left knee is going to hover, cow lunge, take a big breath in. And on your exhale, cat lunge, lengthen both of your legs. Bend into your right knee. Gentle standing splits, keep your left leg to the sky as you inhale. In your exhale, maybe you have a little microphone through your right knee. Think about opening your left hip up towards the left side of the room. Maybe bend your left heel towards your right glute. So similar to that dog with fire hydrant action, but now in your standing splits. Take an inhale. As you exhale, bending through your right knee, cross-legged forward fold. Take your left ankle behind your right. Pinky toes don't need to match up. Dive over your thighs just for a breath. So you unwind your legs to a regular forward fold with a little softness in your knees. Inhale to lift up halfway. And exhale, chair pose, settle your booty back and down. Draw your front ribs in and then lift your heart and hands. Take a big breath as you stretch your heels down and forward into the earth. 
which will help stretch your sits bones back and down in space. Okay, let your arms airplane beside you, slowly sweep your wings back. And standing strong into your left foot, begin to rise up with your right leg, fingertips sweep to the sky, big breath in. We'll exhale into our figure four, right ankle is gonna stack on your left thigh. Let your hands find your heart as you sink back and down through your seat. If you prefer tree pose, feel free to go into tree pose as I fall over. <laughs> Option for Vrikshasana. And active through your right ankle. Take one breath here. And then we're gonna slowly rise back up with an inhale. On your exhale, draw a big hip circle. And as you breathe in, reverse that hip circle. And with breath out, we step back into a high crescent lunge. So you find your high crescent, let your left fingertips straight towards the earth beside you. Right hand reaches up and overhead. So just like we did with our back knee on the earth. Let's so give it one full inhale and one slow exhale. Breathe in to rise to your center. On your out breath, warrior two, rotate your right heel down, and then adjust and settle into your shape. Super powerful through your legs. We're gonna inhale to reverse our warrior. As your left hand reaches up and overhead, focus on your side body stretch. With exhale, pausing here, settle in. Great, extra length. And one more moment, breathe length into your left side. And then as you breathe out, Trikonasana, extend your left leg and start to tip forward into your triangle pose. So your left hand can come to your shin bone, the earth, or a yoga block. As you find your Trikonasana, you have the option for a side body stretch here. So invitation for your right hand to reach up and overhead. So you root through your right foot. Take a nice big breath in. And as you exhale, we're gonna start to bend into our left knee. Hands are coming down to frame your left foot. Unhook your right heel. Going the opposite direction, you're gonna plant your right palm to the earth, twist your left hand to the sky, horizon lunge. Keep rotating all 10 toes to the left. You might have to wiggle your left foot back a little bit. And sinking your hips down, reach your left hand towards the back of your yoga mat. Keep flexing through both of your feet. As you inhale, rainbow your hips out to the sky. Reach your left hand up and overhead to the front of the room. Twice more like that. Exhale, sink low, reach back. Deep breath in to lift and side bend, left hand overhead to the front. Last one here, exhale, sink low, reach back. And inhale, this time as you rise up and over, wide-legged forward fold, turn all 10 toes to the right, unraveling into your wide-legged forward fold. Soften your knees, dive down. Take an inhale and an exhale. And turning towards the back of your yoga mat, do your low lunge. Go ahead and step back into your downward facing dog. Right foot meets your left. On your inhale, lift to your tippy toes. As you exhale like a cat spine, roll forward to your high plank. As you find your high plank, scoop it up and back, downward facing dog. Think cow spine, tailbone to the sky. Good. Inhale to lift your left leg to the ceiling, three-legged dog. As you exhale, bend your knee and open your hip. Three-legged dog, inhale to re-extend. As you empty that breath away, place your left foot forward. Rising to your fingertips, cow lunge, right knee's gonna hover, find your inhale. And then on your exhale, cat lunge, lengthen both your legs. Bend into your left knee. Standing splits, reach your right toes to the sky with a deep breath. Option to open your standing splits as you breathe out. 
If you bend your right heel towards your left boot. Relax your head as much as possible. Maybe there's softness in your left knee. Take an inhale. Right. Now everyone's going to bend their left knee as we step into our cross-legged forward fold with exhale. Right ankle behind your left. Softness through your knees, heavy through your head. Take one inhale. And one mindful exhale. Unwinding through your legs, traditional forward fold. Breathe in to lift up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. And exhale to Utkatasana, chair pose. You're creating through the glutes and your center strength, your belly. And use the contact between your heels and the ground to light up your seat. Once you feel your glutes strong, take a big breath in. Exhale slowly, airplane your arms beside you, just taking your time in every movement. You're going to lean into your right foot and slowly stand up with your left leg. Your hands support your transition, reaching to the ceiling with your breath. Headed to our figure four, left ankle stacks on our right thigh, option for tree pose again. And as you find your figure four, continue that action of untucking your tailbone if you can. Think from the pelvis forward, tailbone back and up. One more cycle of breath, active through the left ankle, pull your left toes back to your left knee. We'll breathe in to slowly begin our journey back to standing. And exhale, step to your high crescent lunge. As you place your left toes to the earth, we'll find our side body stretch. Right hand's gonna fall beside us. Left hand reaches up and over. So get really, really strong through your core so that you help prevent compression through your low back. So if you feel any sort of dumping and pressure in the low back, you can either hinge forward a little bit, you can soften the back knee a little bit, or you can just think about engaging your core, lifting up and out. So making sure you're doing something to relieve any low back pressure. So we're listening to the body. From here, high crescent, both hands go up as we inhale. Warrior two is our exhale. Adjust and settle into your shape. And then breathe in to reverse your warrior. Right hand scooping up and over. Settle in with your exhale. So again, so I might feel very different, different. Give it that extra breath in. And then triangle pose. Begin to extend your right leg. Slowly lengthen forward and tip down into your version of Trikonasana. Again, your right hand can go to your shin bone, a block or the earth. If you want to incorporate the side body stretch in your triangle pose, reach your left hand up and overhead. Think about rotating your left palm to the ground. Your left thumb is pointing towards the wall behind your heart. Take an inhale. And as you exhale, begin to bend into your right knee. Unwinding into a low lunge. Bend your left palm into the earth. Twist your right hand to the sky. As we move to the rise and lunge, turning to the right, you're probably going to have to wiggle your right foot back a little bit. On the outside edges of both your feet, flex to your feet, sink your hips down towards the earth, reach towards your left foot. On your inhale, rainbow your hips up. Right hand goes overhead, sternum to the sky. Twice more, exhale, sink down. Inhale, rise up, push the earth away, think side plank energy. Last one here, exhale, dip low. Then inhale, rise up and over and start to find your way into your wide-legged forward fold. So you might need to adjust your feet as you unravel into your wide-legged forward fold. Just take one breath in. And one exhale. Okay, from here, lift up halfway with your in-breath and then start to rotate to the top of your yoga mat as you breathe out. From your low lunge, just step back into your downward facing dog. Left foot meets your right. 
Like before, we're gonna inhale up to our tippy toes. On your exhale, roll forward to your high plank, catting your spine. As you find your cat spine, think cat spine, hover your knees, heart and tailbone lift as you scoop your pelvis back. And from here, we're going to start to inhale to our tippy toes. One more time, exhale, roll it forward through your high plank. And then this time, as you find your high plank, and scooping your knees down to the earth, and hips back to child's pose, lengthen through your spine. Walk your hands over to the left, finding your side body stretch. So I find that sometimes in a child's pose, I get more leverage for the side body opening. So you're gonna use your lat strength on your right side, that kind of like wing strength on your side body to press your right palm firmly into the ground. From there, think about energetically drawing your right shoulder out of your ear and then actively reach your right hip back in space. As you anchor through your right palm, you can think about using your left hand to push down and forward in the opposite direction. So right hand's rooting down, right hip is reaching back, Left hand is pressing down and slightly forward. Take a big breath into your right side body. And breathing in, walk your hands through center. With exhale, second side. So you're going to press, as you're going to press your left palm down, again, think about the energy of your lat muscle. So left hand's pressing into the earth. You're gonna use the energy of your lat muscle to pull your left shoulder energetically out of your ear. At the same time, think about reaching your left hip back and down. Maybe your right hand pushes down and forward to deepen the side body stretch. And then reach your breath into your left side. Okay, bring it back to center, take a breath in and out. Okay, so let's just rise up into a seat. We're gonna take our seated stretches a little bit deeper as we prepare for our compass pose. The compass pose is a grounded shape that requires a ton of space in the body. So we're gonna go into our wide-legged forward fold here. Your legs extended out. Again, the angle of your legs will depend on your anatomy and your space in your body this morning. You're going to flex your toes to the sky. Think about that kind of cow-like energy. Heart goes up, tailbone untucks. And as you spill the front of your pelvis forward, take a big breath in. On your exhale, you're going to start to walk forward any amount. And this could be two inches. This could be hands to the earth. This could be forearms to the ground. You could also lower down more depending on the space of your body. And then you're still energetically thinking about engaging your legs. So as you flex your toes towards your knees, okay? You think about the strength of your inner thighs, your quads and your glutes. Take two cycles of breath here. And when you're ready to rise up out of the forward fold variation, we're going to slowly push the earth away. We'll inhale to reach up high, so lengthening through the spine. You can kind of give it a little wiggle side to side. And we're going to side bend to the left. So similar to what we did before, left hand can be on the outside or inside of your left leg. I'm going to find your side body stretch. Keep the energy through your legs. Keep flexing your right toes to your face and your left toes to your face as you lean towards the left side of the room. And from here, we'll inhale, rise up through center, reach both hands high, and you give your spine a little wiggle, and then exhale, second side. And both sides might be very different from one another, so 
usually just like how one hip can be more open, one side body can be a little bit more spacious than the other. So trying to keep your left hip anchored to the earth. One more breath into your left side body. Okay, we're gonna slowly rise up from here. I'm make sure I'm keeping track of time. Okay, we're gonna move into a 90-90 stretch just for a moment on each side. Um, doesn't matter what direction you're facing right now, I just realized I rotated to be lengthwise on my yoga mat, but if you're facing forward, it doesn't matter. We're going to bring our right shin in like a half pigeon setup and our left knee out to this side. So you're getting two 90 degree angles. So what it looks like from the other direction is this. So right knee and hip are in, a line, in alignment and right knee and ankle are in alignment to create the first 90 degree bend. And you have left hip, left knee, left ankle. For some people, this left hip is really sticky. And so this position is not as comfortable and doesn't give you as much access to the right hip opening as pigeon. So if pigeon works better for your body, feel free to go there instead. Otherwise, you're going to flex your right ankle, sit up tall, same action you've been doing. Think, spill the front of your pelvis forward, untuck your tailbone backwards. As you inhale, your heart lifts. And as you exhale, leading with your heart, bring it forward any amount. Just like any shape, give yourself a moment to kind of wiggle about, find that sweet spot. And then settle in for two to three cycles of breath. After your second or third breath, leaning back, take a moment to windshield wipe your knees from side to side. We're gonna do the same stretch second side. So again, it doesn't matter what direction you're facing. I'm just gonna rotate to face my left shin bone. Otherwise, you can just sweep your left shin bone forward and stay facing the same direction. Sitting up your right leg as well, you have two 90 degree bends. <laughs> And then on your inhale, lengthen through your spine. And as you exhale, tip forward any amount. So again, this might feel really different from um, the first side. We'll just settle into whatever depth feels good on second side for two to three cycles of breath. Active through the left ankle. Okay, when you start to feel complete from there, you're gonna slowly rise up and out. Now getting into the compass situation, take a moment to do your windshield wipers if you like that reset. Compass is kind of a funky shape. I like to start it from a cross-legged seat. So let's find our cross-legged seat with our right shin in front of our left. Um, you're gonna draw your left knee in, and you're gonna pick up your right shin Kind of like a seated pigeon, it's like cradle it, rock the baby. <laughs> um, right hand's gonna hold on to your right ankle. Each step along the way as we go, feel free to pause at any moment at any of the steps to meet your body where it's at. So your right hand holds on to your right ankle. You're gonna take your left hand and you're going to catch the outside edge of your foot. So your thumb is down towards your right heel. So your left hand, thumbs down towards your right heel. Your hands are wrapping around the outside edge of your left foot. Your left pinky finger and your left pinky toe are close to each other. Your right hand is then going to dive towards the inside of your right leg. Now I like to, at this point, scooch my right booty cheek back a little bit. Yeah. My right hand's going to go out towards the right. 
And then I'm going to start to sit up tall energetically through my heart. From here, I'm going to start to peek underneath my left armpit. And then the last component, as you twist your heart towards the left, is to lengthen through your right leg. That lengthening through the right leg, I think, is the most challenging part. Allow your left side body to extend. Keep peeking underneath your left armpit towards the sky. Take one more breath wherever you're at. And slowly start to unravel the same way that you came in. Releasing your right shin in front of your left again. Bring your hands to the front of your knees. Inhale, draw your heart forward, think cow spike. Exhale, hold on to your knees, round into your cat spine. Okay, shifting forward, we'll find our way in the second side. So left shin is going to come in front. You're going to pick up your left leg, my baby credit whip, maybe rock it side to side. Let's see, left hand is going to hold on to your left ankle so that you are free through your right hand. We're going to flip your grip so your right hand is catching the outside edge of your left foot. So again, right hand, outer left foot, right thumb is facing down towards your left heel. Your pinky finger and pinky toe are close to each other. So you sit up tall. I'm going to reach your left hand underneath you. Good. Try to keep both sit bones firmly planted on the earth. And start to peek underneath your right armpit. Okay. From here, as you peek underneath your right armpit, twisting your heart towards the right, you're going to start to maybe lengthen your left leg. Think about pulling energetically up on the outside edge of your left foot, and then looking to the sky. Whatever stage of compass you're at, take two more breaths. And as you release, just like before, slowly unwind, coming out the way you came in. Left shin goes in front of your right, hands to the front of your knees. Inhale energetically forward through your heart, think cow spine. Then exhale, rounding back, think cat spine. Then it's coming back to neutral. We're going to start to find your way towards the back body. So from wherever you're at, whatever direction you're facing, send your legs down in front of you at the top of your yoga mat. Flex your toes to your face. Take a big breath in, reaching tall. And as you exhale, folding forward first, just for a breath, forward fold. Take an inhale in. And then exhale out. From here, drive down your legs, inhale, reach up high to the sky. And as you exhale, slow and controlled, pull your navel to your spine as you roll to the back of your body. And as you find your way to your back body, reaching from fingers to toes, take a full body stretch with your breath in. Then open mouth, exhale, release. Bend through your knees to set up for your bridge pose. And so your feet are about hip distance. With your heels stacked beneath your knees, take a big breath in. And as you exhale, press to your feet. Begin to lift your pelvis. Maybe tuck your shoulder blades together behind your heart. Then press it your triceps, the backs of your arms into the earth to create that extra lift through your hips. Strong through your belly, take two cycles of breath. On your third inhale, Explore your deepest bridge pose. So maybe hips go a little bit higher, shoulders out of the ears. 
And then use the entire length of your exhale to lower down with control. As you lower down, your hips will eventually find the earth. And then walk your feet as wide as your yoga mat. Knees are still bent. And tick tock both your knees to the left into a pinwheel twist. Option for your left ankle to stack on top of your right thigh here. It's encouraging that length through your front right hip. Your left ankle is stacked on top of your right thigh. Go ahead and unhook the ankle to thigh connection. Tick tock your knees over to the right, finding your pinwheel twist second side. An option for now right ankle on top of your left thigh. Gentle encouragement of navel to spine to deepen the stretch. Take two cycles of breath. Do your second breath. So you unhook your right ankle from your left thigh. If you have that connection, okay, widen your feet, bring your knees up to the ceiling, and then allow your um, knees to knock to center. Take a moment in your fallen bridge, so a low back release, yeah? Feet are wide, knees knock to center, maybe hands to your belly. Just take a slow breath in. A slow breath out. And from here, start to draw your knees into your chest. Option one is legs up to the sky, maybe some softness in your knees. Just pausing here. Option two is going to be plow pose, lifting your hips up and over you, sending your toes towards the earth overhead. Option three would be shoulder stand down. Yeah? To get into your plow pose, similar to the bridge pose that you're in, and then press your triceps, the backs of your arms into the earth. A little bit of core engagement, maybe some momentum if you need it. And then press down and boost your hips up and over you. When you're reaching your toes towards the floor overhead. If you're going to your shoulder stand, your hands are going to hold onto your mid back to support you and you'll send your legs up to the sky. Wherever you're at, take two more cycles of breath. When you're ready to lower down, make sure you use your core Engaging through your belly, softening your knees as you go, gently roll out. And we'll meet in our butterfly shape, this time our supine butterfly, Supta Baddha Konasana. You'll bring the soles of your feet together, let your knees fall open wide. As you settle into your butterfly shape, just closing down your eyes. Take three mindful cycles of breath. Once you've completed your third breath, option to stay here for as long as you'd like. Otherwise, you're making your way towards Shavasana. You could either hug your knees to your heart for one final squeeze first, or you can just send your legs out long to Shavasana, either way. Take a big breath in, and on your exhale, begin to send everything long. Allow yourself to stretch out completely across the earth. 
closing down your eyes as you start to settle in. And it's taking a moment to make those final adjustments to how your body has landed upon the ground. Allowing yourself to really sink deeply into that support. To release away any lingering holding in the body. Any clenching. And to let that sense of holding melt away to the sensation of surrender, as trusting the earth as you drop in. And know that your breath is there with you as an anchor if you start to notice that your mind is wandering, shifting away from the moment, your body, your breath. Just know that you have inhale in and exhale out to draw you back to right here and right now. Starting to turn your attention back to your breath. Just notice, inhale in and exhale out again. And perhaps you just notice your breath without changing anything. Maybe you deepen your breath again, taking in a little bit more air with each inhale and slowing down every exhale. And I start to bring some small gentle movements back into your body, just intuitively reawaking through fingers, toes, ankles, wrists. Maybe you inhale to a full body stretch. And as you exhale at your hands, maybe find their way to your heart or wherever resonates with you. Let me take this final pause to pause in gratitude for a moment at the end of our practice, just sealing all of this in with gratitude. I'm grateful for the yoga practice and the pathway that it provides. Grateful for a practice that meets us where we're at and offers us exactly what we need. Let me pause in gratitude for our bodies and our breath the physical vessel and the life force energy that sustain us and move us through our human experience. And then we pause in gratitude for this time that we shared and the time that you spent in deep connection to your body. 
So in gratitude, deep inhale through your nose. And one more cleansing exhale out of your mouth, let it go. May yoga offer us a path to compassion. And may our practices serve as our teachers. Thank you so much for being here this morning. And namaste.